Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more alive with the past. Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. The answers come for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of us are happy to be in God's presence this afternoon? Just wave your hands to him and say something wonderful to him. Say something wonderful to him. Whatever name you can recall, please speak to him. Any names of God you know, can you begin to say it to him? As many as you can. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Call him names, call him names, Yahweh. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Elohika. Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Nisi, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Thank you. Your love has taken over me And my life depends on you I have confidence in you In you, O oh Lord Your love has taken over me Thank you for the privilege to gather before your very presence, oh God. Your love has taken over us, that's why we came. Our confidence remains in you, oh God. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name. And so, Father, I ask that you take glory this afternoon. Rabboni. Open your scroll to us. Cause our eyes to build wondrous things from your world. Treasure of my life and of my soul. In my weakness you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present world. For the owner of my future days to come Treasure of my life and of my soul In my weakness you are merciful Redeemer of my past and present world
Lord, your presence is ever to us. It is because you are here, that's why we came. Thank you, our Father and Maker. Just worship him with your hands. To we need the full way of your spirit. Shekinah of glory. tonight be all the honor be all the praise and we ask that by your spirit you breathe upon us this afternoon teach us your word open our eyes to see cause our ears to hear cause our hearts to comprehend your word and your ways give us your very word don't spare us this afternoon open our hearts to receive Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to receive. We want more. You're not finished. Lord, open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to receive. celebrate each and every one of us for making out time to be in God's presence this afternoon. I've been away for some time and like Jesus we say it was good that I go. I'm a very conscious person when it comes to atmospheres. Very, very conscious. I don't listen to everybody. I don't listen to every preacher because I'm conscious with my source of information. When Adam fell and discovered alongside Eve that they were both naked, the Bible said, and God came in the cool of e the evening as his customers to fellowship with Adam and began to cry out, Adam, where are you? Now the question there is, by the orchestration of the divine, by the arrangement of the systems of the universe, it is impossible, not even for a second, that God will go blind. So sometimes you begin to wonder, what happened? Is he not seeing Adam? Or why was he still calling to Adam? Are we following? Now, two questions were asked. Number one, Adam, where are you? So it means God was not concerned about his physical location because he could see Adam. His interest was the spiritual location of Adam part time. Are we together? And secondly, Adam said, I'm naked, so I hid. And God asked him the main question Who told you? 
have you found out that all through that scripture God was not concerned about the sin because your mistake is not heavy enough to alter the program of the divine what I mean I'm not saying you should get pregnant but if you do he can use that to still achieve his will there is something about the divine that I wish everybody will comprehend that whatever you do or don't do can spoil his program are we together no because the one who knows the end from the beginning had finished it before he started that's why he said as it was in the beginning so shall it be at the end it means it comes to a point when you get to the ending and you are still seeing the beginning are you confused okay i'll try my best are we together so his concern was his source of what information who told you if god can be concerned about who a man is now listening to i have to be concerned about my source of information are we together i have to be concerned if god can be concerned for his creature are we following <laughs> you know the bible says the words i speak to you they are spirit and they are life so when a man speaks to you he doesn't release just mere words impact to you a deposit of his spirit and a deposit of his grace are we together are we following the source of your information so i'm very conscious when it comes to information and who speaks to me and speaking to my life and so god gave me a direction to embark on the journey i did and i didn't have a regret not even a second in fact i wish i'm still there but i have to return back as early as possible this morning for the meeting but you see one wonderful thing let me share a testimony before i go into the message while i was in the hotel room where i went to is like a city do a church but it's a city i think they have about eight blocks of hotels each of the hotels should be about 100 rooms so the one i stayed was very close to the main auditorium and i i was disturbed yesterday night because this morning was the last minister's uh, session for the minister's conference so i was disturbed i haven't been blessed yesterday i sat under a great woman of god called dr pat francis I, I was sitting and hearing a woman preaching and my mouth was like this until she finished. I was shocked. What? You mean a kind of person is on this earth? Very, very shocked. And so I, I was very touched when our papa said this morning will be the anointing. He's going to proclaim a release and um, bless the ministers. And I needed to meet up with this service. So I was disturbed. So when I went back to the hotel room, I said, Lord, please, my spirit is in two places, like Paul will say. Whether to depart to Mina, which is a profit for the people, or to stay right here and finish this session, which is a gain for me. And the session will finish by two in the afternoon today. So there's no miracle I, will, I can perform to meet up with the service. And say, so I said, okay, Lord, speak to me, please. I want to know your will on this matter. So as I slept in the middle of the night, had so many of encounters, and an angel appeared to me and said, son, you can go. So I woke up around past five. That word woke me up, you can go. So I picked um, my bag, arranged, freshened up, took my, the sofa I just bought, and I came out trekking. Everywhere was still dark. So I looked for bike. There was no bike. So I said, there's no problem. I'm not really scared. It's difficult to kill me. The best day I'll just disappear. So you don't know attempt it just make an attempt one day that you want to stab me you find that i'm not there not every man is a human again some people are spirits are we together but you can try and find out and so while i was still trekking to see if i can locate a bike i heard the voice of god don't worry you'll be blessed this afternoon okay i'll give you the word in 15 minutes you have never heard it in your life now I heard God's voice said, go back to the church and pray. I did my devotion in my hotel room. So God said, go back into the church building and pray. So most of the, the guys in the Bible school located very close distance from the hotel where I was located. They wake up at interval. It's like a Jewish setup. 
So they wake up at interval to blow the shofar. 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So they were blowing the shofar at 6 a.m. I was inside the church. I knelt down, I was praying. I said, Lord, you said I should go. And I don't want to miss this anointing. I travel all distance to come here. But however, I am connecting to the grace in this place. I did all the spiritual activity I want to tell you I can do on how to connect to certain realities. So I said, I will be going now. But while there will be anointing people, everybody present here, the anointing drops on me too. So I picked my chauffeur. I told the security man at the gate, I said, they were wondering why I came back. I said, I have to go now. While I go, was going, I found that oil was dripping out of my chauffeur. I held it. I was surprised. It's still dripping. See, now, I was shocked. <laughs> and you know, I was very smart. I made sure I rubbed it very well and anointed myself. I said, thank you, I've got in my own anointing. Are we together? So you see, for your profit, he had to permit me to come. Are we following? We are in the season. The sermon has started. I'm teaching about the glory above and the glory below. We are in a very sensitive season in the church. I, I wish everybody in this territory could be present in today's meeting. But nonetheless, we are in a very sensitive season in the church. Now, the Jews' calendar says we have entered into a new year, right? Around September 29 to October 1st, which we call the Rosh Hashanah. Is that not so? Two days ago was the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Rosh Hashanah is the new year for the Jewish calendar. We use the Gregorian calendar, which is the general calendar of the world, the Englishman calendar. And the year for the Jews is 5780, right? That's 5780 years now. Are we following? The Jews have a belief based on the fact that God created man in six days. After six days, right? And then gave man the lease of the earth. Are we following? That man will manage the earth for that number of years. So the Jews believe that scripture says a day in God's sight is a thousand years. So what God gave to man was six thousand years. Just follow me. Are we following? And so, if we are in 5780, what the Jews believe is that this world will come to an end in the next 220 years. Are we together? In the next what? 220 years. If you subtract 6,000 from 5780. But however, in preparation for his coming, they've been preparing about 350 years ago are we following in fact if you go to the temple institute in jerusalem you will see archives documents and activities being done 350 years ago in preparation for the coming of the messiah are we following and in this year 5780 the Jews have this belief that it's a year where God is putting things into perspective for his coming. Are we together? God is what? Putting things into perspective for his coming. Am I taking you bigger than you can be? Eh? Don't worry, today is not ABC, alright? Just follow me. I'll try my best for you to understand. If you can't understand, get the message and listen to it again. Are we together? So they have that belief and mindset that God is putting things into what perspective? Bring the Holy Ghost one minute. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Hey, anana, hey, anana. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. believe that God is putting things into what? Perspective. And if you watch the trend in the earth, the trend in the body of Christ, you can understand that God is making things straight. 
are we following if i write in the conference one of our father give us a prophecy he said god said by next year beginning from this jewish calendar what he is doing is that he will be taking flocks from unworthy shepherds <laughs> are, are we following so he's straightening things and while i was meditating on my journey coming i don't have a sermon as i said i don't have a book i was just with my phone and i was trying to understand the mind of god lord what do i even say to your people that you forced me to come and he said to me he said tell them about my glory above and my glory below i am putting things into what perspective bring them into a balance of the life of grace so we've been hearing teaching of the grace life this life that jesus has brought to us but however we are not even living a quarter of the reality of that life give me matthew chapter 4 put it on the screen for me the bible says and one time follow me to pray in the holy ghost one second i want to go into something deep and i want you not to miss me in 10 minutes i'll be done but you have to be smart are we together in jesus name now why am i going this way while i was in the meeting in the hotel room an angel appeared to me and said to me son we are the realities i gave you i sat down we are the gold dust we are the angelic experiences bring back my glory that's why i'm, I'm not going to teach something very small the way i've pet you guys for a long while we're going to deep things now so follow me are we together now in matthew chapter 4 verse 1 the bible says that jesus was driven into where the wilderness to be tempted of the devil he fasted 40 days and be tempted of the devil now the devil came in the first place and told him if you be the son of man turn these stones into bread now what the devil was trying to do was to take things out of perspective are we following was to make him lose his agenda his purpose for coming was to make him do things mixing up both his purposes and the purposes of others so he was telling him turn this stone to bread it means make the law look like what you came to fulfill are we together make the law look like the life of grace just paint it paint it let it look like it I, I, i'm trying to bring the grace life into perspective and balance are we following that's why when you read psalm 91 the bible says he will give you keep his angels charge over you to keep you what in all your ways so that you will not dash your foot against a stone now the devil told him throw yourself from the high mountain throw yourself down it means come back from the life of grace into this life of the law are we together and he said no because he was reminding him he will give the angels charge so one of the assignment of the angels is to prevent you from living the grace life into the life of the law you came from now follow me please don't lose me that's not even my sermon are we together why will jesus keep responding this way making him understand you can't what he was saying was something nice he needed bread at that point in time but you see the problem is you can't turn the stone to the bread it has to be the bread from the original so that, that's where the church is missing it mixing up things mixing up things are we following so the, the grace life is a glorious life but one of the most frustrated and dejected people on earth are the christians so you begin to wonder what kind of life are we living because what we end up doing the kind of people we raise where stones we turn to bread instead of totally disannulling the stones and make a brand new bread so i am begging you you have to do this because of this not that something has totally changed and transformed you understand are we following now pray in the holy ghost one minute i'll take you somewhere in jesus name so abba 2 14 now said 
Give me 13, Abaku 2, 13. God was marveled. Okay, let's read it together. He said, is it not from the Lord of us that the people labor only to fuel the fire and continually exhaust themselves for nothing? Did you see that? Give me verse 14. He says, so for the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. The knowledge of the glory shall cover the heavens. No! The earth as the waters cover the sea. So where am I driving into? The great life is not to operate glory above but also to operate glory below. Where you see Christians becoming spiritually matured but earthly useless. They become giants in the spirit but no entities on the earth. Losing sense of relevance or influence in the stratas and the systems of cosmos. No relevance. With this kind of life, with this kind of grace life, and yet you are not a sought after. No! He said, why do they labor for nothing? Why do they exhaust themselves? If this the life, the grace life brought, then it was useless. Give me Isaiah 55, verse 3. I round up tonight. Follow me now. Now, let's look at the problem. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Verse 3. 55, verse 3. Okay. Pay attention and come. Oh, 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 okay. Don't worry, any version is okay for me. Incline your ear and come unto me. Yeah, and your soul shall leave. Yeah, and your soul shall leave. What does it mean? <laughs> what happened at salvation is the awakening of your spirit. And then by the time you begin to fuel up such reality, you begin to operate in fearful dimensions of the glory. Operate in crazy realms of miracle, signs and wonder. But the problem is your soul is still not living now the bible is saying let your soul live what does it mean don't be spiritually sound and be totally useless upstairs there is a divine glory and there is a natural glory awaken your brain put your brain to work The body of Christ has taught that the Christian faith to be useless. Now, in parenting, you parent your children to operate in autonomy. Such that you can watch them and see them take choice, make choices and decisions themselves without your interference. That's how he did for even the first man. It is a form of learning disability. If your child have to take an excuse for you to brush his teeth use your brain use your brain why you were born to be create to create the bible says we are created genesis 1 28 in what in the image of god learn to create take decisions yourself that's what he wants awaken your natural glory feed your mind to be productive you can be firing tongues and nothing useful is coming out of your head. What the Bible means by saying in Proverbs 3 verse 5, acknowledge me in all my ways, your ways, it means put me in consideration. Commit it to me. He didn't say you must wait for me all the time to hear a voice. There are decisions I take myself. Why? Philippians 2.13 He walketh in me both to do and to will of his good pleasure. Tell your neighbor, use your brain. You are not a robot. That's the problem. Everything. Lord, I, I want to hear a voice. Do you hear a voice to go to the toilet? Why? An organization, a fashioning, a configuration in your system tells you that's where you need to visit now. Don't wait for a voice. Are we together? Why? He made you in his image. 
you see something you don't like take a decision to change it you can't be waiting for God for everything he packaged you and made you first what in his image awaken that's what we call the natural glory that helps you reign on earth now hear me I'll say something shocking to you eternally you are beautiful eternally you are glorious eternally yeah, yeah. eternally together are we following inform your mind exploit that image exploit that deposit in the inside of you are we following hear me do you know <laughs> without being a Christian you can be excellent you can be extremely successful why you don't need to be a Christian to be successful that's why we receive the brilliance of the gates he said i will put computers everywhere every room every offices he did that later he came and said we put it in every pocket yeah it is your answer he said i will change the world he has done that yet he's not a christian but hear me why do we receive the computer that big gate is created in the image of god so what he has done is to have awakened his natural glory but not the divine glory so he might not make heaven but he's ex exhibiting excellence on earth he's producing fruit now let me show you some that's why even god said in genesis 11 verse 8 that this human i created in my image though sinful though not having a relationship with me anything they imagine to do they will do it without my efforts without my input once they make up their mind to exploit their intelligence to exploit that configuration of my image in the inside of them he said they will do it do you know man still did it are people not flying to the moon now they say it's not genesis you want to stop us we'll make attempt but you see believers see you can command dominions on the heavens and be useless on the earth and our assignment is not just to operate in our divine glory of miracles signs and wonders but also to unlock our natural glory for the glory of the lord shall be revealed where on the earth on the earth tell your neighbor learn to create learn to use your brain learn to think learn to take decisions that's parenting no, no father wants his or child to be an imbecile. Are we together? Where the place of the voice of God comes is in moments of confusion and moments where that thing we alter his will. That's why he said, watch. If I am directing you, it means you are already taking a step. Are we together? That's where his voice comes okay give me my scripture isaiah 55 verse 3 let me finish it so he said give me quickly quickly time is against me incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and i will make thee make an everlasting covenant with thee even the sure mercy of david it means when he creates you he leads you because you have been made in his image to take decisions on your own to make choices and he watch from the rear knowing fully well that there is something called the sure mercies of david so even at the fall of man is it genesis friend of holy ghost genesis okay thank you thank you genesis 3 i think 21 the first action of god at the fall of man was a redemptive plan adam till date never asked god for clothes neither did he ask god for mercy that's why any man born that's what we call the adamic nature is born with the configuration to love sin it was by his act of redemption even in that fallen state because of the sure mercies of david to preserve him the bible says with the coat of his skin he never killed an animal the word skin there from the original greek word is the word light 
it means even in folly state he still wrapped this man with a glory have you seen if you see to your bible i give you hundred thousand today and he say he used animal skin any version of your choice i give you hundred thousand right now no some of you what you crammed is your book of bible story you know 50 years ago you don't do anything <laughs> one of my son asked me a question some few days and i was angry i said my friend go and labor in the world you you think i just stand here and say anything labor study are we together he wrapped him in light in glory he secured that man so that if you are scared and say ah, what if you say we must not always wait to hear his voice to take a decision to make a choice that's not how he created you to function are we together awaken your natural glory so if you are scared of the mistake there is the sure message of david that's why sometimes people wonder the way i live with my children i know some people say you are not strict you don't follow do this one you don't do that. why now hear me and hear me clearly i heard the voice of god some days back he said son you can never get a greater reputation than me i'm not scared if tomorrow they say one person is pregnant from grace after we finished the hundred hours of prayer it doesn't mean i failed the same people he came to die for were the same people that killed him he had 12 disciples he was surprised that one took the decision to betray him the same creature he made he saw the same creature listening to the voice of the devil he was shocked and i want to have a better reputation than him you don't know that good attracts evil where there is wit there must be a test because evil cannot if you take good away from this world that's the end of evil it operates in self-destruct what makes evil survive is the presence of good I'm scared the sure messes of david feed your mind to become productive that it can give you economic value some, some of you are funny you're funny how will you stay and you are praying for seven days for financial breakthrough and when you are done with the seven days you sat down waiting for a voice something's wrong with you it's your brain are we together and that's why i told you in scripture everything the disciples did they never had voices just in real occasions they took the decisions themselves why they are created in the image of god how do i know the Bible said, at one time Paul and Barnabas were about to enter into a city to preach the gospel. And the Holy Spirit forbid them to go there. If they have asked him before, he wouldn't have told them to go there. That's the sure message of David to preserve us. Rise up to your feet. Let me run. Unto Jesus I surrender oh. now hear me hear me believers you have to wake up that's my current message for the body of christ we are raising a strange breed that is unfamiliar to the heavens this is not how god operates this is not how he operates a strange breed on the earth people with fearful dimensions of the work of the holy ghost yet becoming useless on earth you mean with all your tongue you can't produce a value that will attract money naturally till money becomes a prayer point see it's not paying tight that makes you wealthy it's not <laughs> it's not sowing seed that makes you wealthy they have their own levels of blessing attached to them it's being productive with your mind being productive sit down to think activate your brain read a lot think smart think wise you are made in his image take decisions i remember when we came to the um, campus one of my son was asking me he said papa i think we now begin to after we finish the section of the prayers he said i think we are now supposed to start praying to know when the day of the meeting will be is there something wrong with you 
am I a robot? Am I blind or deaf to hear or see that this is an academic environment and lecture is Monday to Friday? So I should want to hold it morning breakfast service, Monday morning. Because you heard a voice. Stop behaving like you. Something's wrong. Awaken your natural glory. You are created in what is image. And one thing about your father is a creator. He creates. You know, when we begin to have this now in the body of Christ, this balance, then we'll see the true grace life. Christians coming with innovation. That's the problem of Africa, the dark continent. An absence of revelation. And that's why people insult religion and tell you religion is a scam. Because all we do is to raise believers that only concern themselves about the glory above. What of the glory below? Are we together? And so we see the people of the world coming up with strange innovations. Strange innovations. Witty inventions. And here we are doing nothing. Speaking tongues. <laughs> you see, as much as I believe in paying prizes, are we following? Are we together? The sum total of Christianity is at the end point to bring man to a point of ease, convenience, and freedom. One of my daughters sent a post one time. The reason why the white man makes inventions is because they want things to be easier for people. Is that not so? They want things to be easier for you. But the black man wants things to be difficult. That's the way. <laughs> you see the way you think. The brain, something's wrong. So they can't create. They can't invent because they believe that things must keep getting difficult. It's a crime if you come to class and sit down and something just talks to the board in 10 minutes. The lecturer is not happy. So you see an active student now, what his mate finished in 1979 to be drawing with pencil in FUT at 500 level 2019. He's still drawing with pencil and his mate will hold a laptop and in 10 minutes they have designed a complicity. The way we think. The way we think. It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> Even the way we think about money is a problem. See, with spiritual, my problem, what I came to correct is spiritualizing everything. Even to dress well is a challenge for the body of Christ. To dress well. He said, no. See, the missionaries were very sound guys. Are we following? They brought us the gospel. They taught us the ways of God. And they also taught us a beggarly life because they knew how to beg for fund. That's the problem. Why the body of Christ is yet to embrace wealth. The missionaries, they don't do anything. They just look for funds abroad. Please help us, we are in the field. So as they gave you the gospel, they also taught you that life. So somebody feels, I told you some of you will not cope in heaven. You'll be angry when they say, take your mansion. They say, no, 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 this wasted. Lord, Why? Why, why will you give only me such a thing? It's wastage. It's wastage. One time, one of my daughter called me and said, she, a pastor was preaching in a home cell and told them, quote a scripture, where Jesus said, I became poor so that you might become rich. And she was confused. You see, your confusion is because you are too spiritual and you are totally useless with the image itself. When they say, you see, what helped me now was not an inspiration. It was normal English language and sound reasoning. Sound what? Reasoning. When they say you became poor, what does it mean? You were formerly what? Rich. Something is wrong with you. And you did that for a purpose so that this man can now become what? Rich. Is it difficult to understand? Poor reasoning. Africans begin to inform your mind. Inform your mind. So a Christian feels this wrong to be wealthy now. See the problem? It's wrong. A man that will concern himself to make the road of a street gold. And you are angry that let's not wear some expensive things. You know, I've told you that they were sharing Jesus' clothes at his death. Your clothes now can they share it when you die? 
your I mean your clothes and if you think it was because they knew he was very anointed read your Bible the guy sharing the clothes were the guys that killed him it has nothing to do with honor or anointing they were mocking him on that same cross and dragging him for his clothes so it wasn't man too they wanted to make good money from it somebody said God or oh, Jesus did not own any house it's an insult for Jesus to be placed on a kind of value that you can amass it's an insult to even say such a thing who owns the world you're crazy so you want him to now say Jesus owns 10 estates with you so you you now be dragging with Jesus now and say what is his net worth you want to write it to something is wrong Africa the dark continent they lack illumination that's what I'm going to do for the next one year illume the mind I say man think it in his heart so he's even God knew that the way your mind is framed is how your life will turn out to be awaken your natural glory are we together every day you walk look at yourself and say i am created in the image of god i make decisions like him that's why he brought the animals for adam and said name them and the bible said whatever name he called them so the, the name thereof was name them. Name them. so he goes i i need to do this and do this thank you for leading me i take the decision the sure mercy of David preserves me in a way if that decision is not his way he stops me he directs my path and says oh, no are we together are we following read a lot be creative in your thinking the way you do your things see any day you wake up just look at yourself and create a perspective of God in the front of you your life will be changing over time create it no man on this earth is qualified enough to be your standard at best they just lead you or guide you the role model and the perfect model remain Jesus look at him in the aspect of dressing in the aspect of wealth whatever it is look at him just imagine if Jesus was alive today what kind of car will he ride? Some people say he will be trekking from Capernaum to Galilee. Something is wrong with you. Poverty will be difficult to live your bloodline. I'm serious. It will be difficult. <laughs> it will be difficult. The donkey was the most expensive means of transportation in Jesus' days. Go and research. The most expensive. Point he saw men putting their clothes on the ground for the donkey to march. He didn't stop them. Even when others were stopping them, he was angry. Say, let's celebrate the man of God. People begin to clap. He said, hmm, you see, it is God of men, not man of God. Your village people is attacking your brain. Your village people is at work in your life. It's a problem in Africa. It's a problem. The way we think and reason. Is keeping Africa in a cage. You know why it's boiling me on every broadcast, especially people that want to teach wealth and prosperity. Now I still agree that the problem in this prosperity gospel is there's an overemphasis on that. It's too much. It's not our sermon. Are we following? We teach them the way of life, and naturally it makes them prosper. But to make prosperity a topic per service, I don't believe in that. It's too much. Jesus never made it a topic. Are we together? But you see, you own any of those brokers and what the men of God use and the people of the world. He said, check Africa. They have the largest number of churches in the world. They pray more than everybody and do vigils everywhere. And yet, they are the poorest on the earth. Why? They are waking. And do you know still date? Africa, to an extent, is one of the nations that produce the highest dimension of heavenly glory. When it comes to raw miracles, dimensions, operations of the spirit, Africa is top. In fact, Nigeria is among them. But when it comes to the operation of the natural glory on the earth, excellence, creativity, innovation, it's nothing, nothing to write them about. 
was the topic again the glory above and the glory below for the knowledge of the glory shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea people by the way you live your life will begin to see what God looks like to perfectly represent him no part of your life will bring him a shame or reproach is it excellence is it your innovation is in your thinking, in your creativity, in the way you speak. The Bible says when Jesus spoke, Jesus, he spoke as one that had authority to the point that they sent two soldiers to go catch him. Are we together? To go catch him. And they sat down. Hmm. Dropped their gun and listened to the whole preaching. And when they went back, they said, where is the guy we say you should go and catch? They said, hmm, never in our life. As a man spoke like this and you are talking and people are feeling bored and sleeping what's your problem and you say it's because they cannot take the word something's wrong with you improve yourself improve your skill lift up your hands we'll continue part two some other time i'm going to preach this for the next one here in different form the grace life we are going right now into the real mandate of the ministry to raise people that were operating stratas of the earth the real mandate. That's all my salmon will be surrounded around the grace realm. The realms of grace. All the salmon prayer will teach it in that light. Bringing balance and priority. Bringing right perspective to the body of Christ. And God will begin to raise a people for himself that will take over the systems of the world. Revelation 11 15 says, And the kingdoms of the world shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. The kingdoms of the world it won't just come by prayer and fasting no but by we also operate in our natural glory our natural glory now hear me listen i've convinced you enough by the way of the word not by my opinion or decision or thought but by the way of the word that a man might not have a relationship with god and be very successful if he touches more what his natural glory most of the guys shaking the nations of the world, the Benzos, are atheists. They are atheists, free thinkers. They think to a point it unlocked the scrolls of their system. And we make use of what they invented now. Why didn't you say you won't? Because it's not a Christian. Though he is not a Christian, but he was still created in the image. Not, he, he was not created looking like the devil. He was created looking like the one that created me. So if he touched that part of him, you will see him playing around creativities of the earth. However, he will not have his salvation in heaven. That's the problem. I pray for you today. May the Lord walk upon your minds. May the word, Lord walk upon your mind. From today, I've told you, listen, the introduction of sin into the earth was not from Adam and Eve. <laughs> the introduction of sin into the earth never came from Adam and Eve. <laughs> the introduction of sin into the earth never came from the devil. He was not the origin. If he sinned, then where did that sin came from? Say he committed something that was wrong. Where did it come from? Because the Bible says, and something entered his heart. Where was it coming from? Where was the source? You see, to be qualified to be called God is such that you must make your subject to accept you willingly and not operate like robots. So by the ordinance of that organization and system, God had to create a special thing called choice. That's the origin of sin, choice. Such that the man can decide to choose to serve him or not. If they were forced to serve him, he's not qualified to be called God. So even when he wanted to create the second earth, where he brought Adam and Eve into the picture, he still gave them a garden to decide by themselves to choose. That's why I raise children and I leave them to operate. Knowing fully well 
that the sure mercies of David secures them. Has it worked for me 100%? Not true. That's why I showed you Jesus' is own too. <laughs> if you think I don't pray enough, Jesus prayed enough. He still had one wrong inside them. You can't beat the reputation of God. But all I know is that I can't give up on them. Are we following? The constant and the summary of Christianity is redemption. So even in their faults, even their mistakes, I am afterwards their redemption. I'm going out to see a way to bring them to stand strong again. That's the way my father operates. Because we are beginning to operate in a form of what we call control in the body of Christ. That's why people are speaking against all this fatherhood and this, the rest of this nonsense. Control or free the sheep. We are operating that because we are scared that if we don't allow them to operate their free will, they will not do the things we want them to do. But it's wrong. It is anti-God, anti-Christianity, anti-Kingdom. Are we together? It's wrong. A child should have the freedom to express his own decisions to the Father. That's parenthood. Allow them to be autonomous. That's how God operates. Have you not wondered why you have been crying for something? You want to hear a voice now, seven years. And you are like this. Your trousers will still be like this. Wait for the voice. Don't worry, wait. If you like it, take the decision. Are we together? Take what? The decision. Then if it's not his will, he directs your path. Stop behaving like a robot. Use your brain. Like I said, will it be nice for your child to wake up every morning and take a permission to brush his teeth? Say, mommy, please, can I brush my teeth? What will you land him? A very dirty slab. Because that's learning disability. Something is wrong upstairs. Is that not so? Something is wrong upstairs. Oh, one of my child now will call me because they are so close to me. Like my daughter is so close to me. And she now call me and say, Papa, please, I want to take excuse. Can I go to the toilet now? Stay. Don't worry. Stay. Don't be everything in the third person. Stay. Stay. Don't worry. Lift up your hands and thank you, our Father, for tonight. Thank you for your awesome praise. Thank you for everything. From the bowels of our hearts, we are grateful. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just say something wonderful him. Give him praise. Thank him. Thank him. Worship him. Thank him. Thank him. Say something wonderful to him. He's so wonderful. He's so good. We bless your maker. We thank you. From the bowels of our heart, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful for the things our eyes could see, for the things our eyes could not see. We are grateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for us. I, I pray for you. Just leave her. Leave her. Just leave her. May God give you a reason to celebrate. I decree and I declare under God. May God give you a reason from now till the end of the year to give him thanks. 
may you always have reasons to give God thanks. I prophesy, may you always have reasons to give God thanks. In the name of Jesus, I decree rain of good news for you. I prophesy rain of good news. Undeniable joy. Undeniable joy. Undeniable joy. Undeniable joy. Undeniable joy. In the name of Jesus. Now for every one of you under the sound of my voice. I make a proclamation tonight under the sound and the influence of the Spirit. From now to the end of the year, I hear God say to me, I am giving each one 21 notable miracles. I prophesy, as He has spoken, so shall it be in your life. Notable miracles, mind blowing miracles, mind blowing miracles. Mind blowing miracles, mind blowing miracles in the name of Jesus. I pray for you over your results. Go and celebrate. I decree, go and celebrate. It is settled, it is done in the name of Jesus. For the under level student, I prophesy, enjoy God's help all true. Enjoy God's help all true. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is a desire, whatever is a burden in your spirit, I declare and I declare. Between now and the next 14 days, may there be a response from heaven for you. May there be a response from heaven for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just with your hands and blessing. Thank you.